By 1999, survival horror was truly alive and kicking. Resident Evil was prepping its third instalment after a multitude of reproductions hit the market, and Konami would too prep their answer to Capcom's monstrous money-making franchise. The result is Silent Hill, a genuine horror masterpiece. If Alone in the Dark patented survival horror and Resident Evil refined it, then it is arguable that Silent Hill perfects it with a fantastically suffocating atmosphere, sublime presentation, and excellent survival horror gameplay. It's easy to forget, with subsequent instalments diluting the impact, but Silent Hill's debut marks perhaps the scariest game of its time. Harry Mason is having the day from hell. After a car crash leaves him stranded and his daughter missing, he attempts to cut through the foggy, eerily deserted town of Silent Hill. But quickly it is established that this is no safe haven, as the town hides a murky set of secrets which will literally take Mason to a dark place the mind can't even contemplate. Despite assistance from police officer Sybil and some other mysterious characters, Harry is in for the toughest challenge in his fatherhood. Much like the locale itself, Silent Hill's story offers remarkable depth to uncover, with hidden strands that require extra exploration to uncover. The voice acting is a touch dodgy, but they don't spoil some of the game's most memorable moments, which range from sombre to disturbing. In fact, they somewhat enchant it, lending an almost distorted, warped version of reality. Upon initial viewing, Silent Hill doesn't seem to stray too far from the template. Harry Mason steers using the refined tank control system, allowing you to navigate through claustrophobic environments while partaking in a mix of puzzle sequences and combat encounters. Silent Hill serves as the figurative puzzle box to unlock, divided into two distinct districts as well as the unsettling, dreamlike otherworld which turns navigating on its head. There are a few tweaks though that help set Silent Hill apart from its contemporaries. Harry Mason is not a special forces agent, so when aiming a weapon, his targeting is far shakier depending on how far away enemies are. He can also take far less hits, but to avoid frustration, there are changes which compensate. Harry can carry items without limits, find maps for each areas as well as mark key interactions and where he's explored, and can even move while aiming and shooting. Where some may criticise Silent Hill for its clear inspirations, it makes up for this by being the most unsettling game created. Team Silent masterfully worked with the PS1's limitations, covering the sleepy town with a dense fog. Not only does this mitigate the demand on the console, but it clouds your vision, which, along with dense darkness, makes for an unsettling feeling. This combines expertly with the radio, an in-game item which begins to unnervingly react to enemies, ranging from monstrous ferals to flying screamers, with a static screeching that intensifies closer to enemies. It almost seems to react without enemies' presence, which, combined with the cerebral use of ambient sounds, keep you on edge throughout, making the few high-impact jump scares so much more potent as a result. It's a suffocating atmosphere. Despite limitations, Silent Hill remains a remarkably impressive game from a technical standpoint. Beating Code Veronica by a year, Silent Hill uses fully 3D environments, which are a break from the traditional pre-rendered backgrounds. They benefit from an eerie, dark design and superb camera work, which sways unpredictably and shifts almost as if you are being stalked. The sound deserves equal credit, with a liberal use of music, most of which is completely unnerving, and loud sound effects providing the tension. One room, which otherwise has no importance, features repeatedly loud glass smashes. It's these little moments which make Silent Hill a masterclass at delivering scares and tension. Like the best of its peers, Silent Hill offers excellent replay value. 
you can expect to spend between 12 and 15 hours on your first run through, especially if you endeavour to seek out several optional tasks which contribute to one of five endings. It may seem minor, but the requirements for each ending are spread apart enough that a majority of the playthrough is needed to see each ending, including a joke ending which has become a staple of the series. You also earn a rank depending on items acquired, time spent, and other factors. It's a game you'll want to revisit, even though the fear factor is hardly reduced with each play. <coughs> and that's ultimately why Silent Hill is the pinnacle of the survival horror genre. Alone in the Dark set the groundwork, but didn't quite fit the pieces together. Resident Evil came close with its excellent initial trilogy, but could be argued lacks the consistent scares. Silent Hill, from the moment you step foot in the fog encased town, is a terrifying ordeal that reaps great rewards for those who can bear its suffocating atmosphere. It may be unparalleled when placed against its contemporaries, and Konami have smartly adjusted the survival formula to suit this twisted brand of horror. Unless you can't bear to feel fear, Silent Hill can only be considered a must play.